Good morning. It's Friday, February the 12th, 2021. This is Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Just like to welcome you all to Food for Thought and our new series on the parables of Jesus Christ. So over the next uh, two months, we're going to be looking at uh, the parables of Christ on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I would welcome you to join me, and that's should the Lord tarry and the Lord will, we'll be uh, covering all 24 parables that Jesus told in the first three Gospels. And um, a lot of the parables are repeated in different books, but I'll be choosing um, one particular passage from either Matthew, Mark, or Luke for each parable. Now this morning, we're going to start off with the first parable that Jesus um, spoke and that was recorded in the scriptures um, it's found in Mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 9 that's the version we're going to be reading because it is in Matthew and Luke as well but in Mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 9 we read again Jesus began to teach by the lake the crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into the boat and sat out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching he said listen a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered, because they had no root. Other seed fell amongst thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still, another seed, uh, still other seed fell on good soil, it came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears, let them hear. Now, in this particular parable that we're looking at, um, Jesus explained the parable to his disciples after the fact. Now, if you recall, on Wednesday, I had introduced the parables, and uh, to those that had hardened hearts the parables didn't make any sense but God has some rich truth in these parables for his children to understand so Jesus uh, went out of his way to explain the parable um, as recorded in Mark chapter 4 13 to 20 then Jesus said to them don't you understand this parable how then will you understand any parable the farmer sows the word some are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they fall away quickly. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke out the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed grown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times what was sown. Now in this parable, Jesus introduces a farmer. And he doesn't say directly who this farmer is. It may be that God uses different means to sow his word into the hearts of human beings. Now, the farmer could refer to Jesus himself, or also it could refer to those who preach the word of God as his representatives. So whether it's Jesus himself or his disciples who scatter God's word of truth into the ground of men's hearts, in hearts we mean the spirit of men, the farmer sows the seed into the field, which is the world. Now, the hearts of the people of the world. Now, there's various kinds of spirits out there, different kinds of hearts. And the different soil types represent human hearts and their receptivity towards the word of God. Now, in verse 15, Jesus said that some of God's words, uh, word lands into the heart's that are like a path and if you think about a path it's packed and it's hardened and unbroken it before God um, the word does not penetrate their heart it sits on the surface level 
This person is stubborn and unyielding to the Holy Spirit, unmoved and untroubled by the message of the gospel. This person says no and pushes away the message that is, is told to them about the good news of Jesus Christ. It does not penetrate them. And because it does not penetrate them and lays on the surface, the devil and his servants of the kingdom of darkness, they easily come like birds and pluck the word off of the hearts of these people. They soon forget the message given to them and they go on their way indifferent, continuing in their lives uh, in the way that seems best to them, not acknowledging God. Of these people, the following scripture in Proverbs uh, 16.25 is true. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but in the end uh, it leads unto death. Now some of the word was uh, preached to these men in the field here. And um, it landed on stony ground, on shallow soil with a rocky base uh, filled with stones. The heart of these people had some brokenness and the word of God had moved their conscience and penetrated their spirits, perhaps maybe through listening to uh, you know, a fervent message or a song or hearing someone say something, preach something, hearing uh, the word of God in, in various ways. And it affected them. Um, they made a profession of faith quickly, um, but it was only uh, a mental ascent that was not accompanied by a full surrender. Um, there is within this heart areas of hardened rebellion against God which will not accept the seed of the word. And uh, even though the individual accepts the word of God with joy and quickly, um, it would have been better if they would have received it with deep repentance. But in this case, they uh, were unrepentant on a number of levels and had hearts that were holding out on God's call for surrender. Now, this represents stony soil. So it, although, although it seemed as though they were on the way to producing good spiritual fruit, um, they en encountered hardships of different kinds in their, in their lives. Uh, persecution from others who uh, made fun of them because they appeared to be allied with Christ. And because the word growing within them had not been rooted properly and was not deep, when the heat of life is turned on, uh, they fall away uh, from approaching Christ for salvation. And their Christian belief is exposed to be fraudulent. And the word that it started to grow inside of them uh, withers up and dies. This person is not truly saved. See, then there is a person whose spirit receives the word of God uh, deep within them. Um, the heart of this person on the outside appears to be soft and surrendered to the Lord. And the word of God grows there and it starts to um, affect that person. But so does everything else because there's small things that they're not willing to give up to God, like seeds of weeds. And uh, like weed seed in the soil, the problem in holding on to a little sin is that sin, holding on to a little sin, does not stay little for long. Like weeds, unsurrendered sin soon, soon begins to outgrow the, uh, the word of God within individuals. And just like weeds uh, grow amongst a crop and choke it out, uh, the person starts to worry about, um, about the uh, cares of their life. You know, they start to think about things that, uh, that distract them from the Word of God. And um, of the three types of soil that do not produce a harvest, the seed amongst the weeds presents an altogether different scenario from the seed sown on the hard path, which is scooped away before it can sprout. And the seed that is sown in rocky soil, which uh, withers soon after germinating because of the sun scorching it. Um, th this third type of soil, the word actually starts to grow strong inside of the person's spirit. 
Yet, as the plants are growing, um, these weeds, these cares of life, uh, they compete for the nutrients, the sunlight, and, and room to grow inside of the heart of the person. Um, the weeds become a threat to the health and maturity, and uh, the, the mature harvest is choked out, and this person doesn't uh, produce fruit. Now, these weeds can be preoccupations with this world's business. They can be worries about a list of you know, various lists of different things. Um, and, you know, most often, uh, people that want to get rich, uh, lust to become rich and, and things like this, distract a person away from the Word of God. And, and those things crowd out the Word of God. Those with weedy hearts uh, soon find their life dominated um, by those sins by those weedy sins which chokes out uh, the plant of the word that's been placed within them. They begin to lose interest in spiritual things until finally they abandon any claim to being Christians at all. See, they, they never actually bear fruit because they never are truly saved. Now finally, the Lord describes a spirit that is soft and accepting of the word planted within them, sown into them by the, by the farmer. Now their hearts are uh, soft, accompanied by true repentance, giving Jesus Christ the lordship of their hearts. These people have been uh, truly born again. The cleansing sacri work, sacrificial work of Jesus and the blood that he shed on the cross, that has um, sterilized the weeds. Their heart has been fully yielded to the working of the Holy Spirit and, and tilled. Um, the hard rocks of rebellion have been raked out. The Word of God truly takes root and grows deep into these people's spirit. And there are a few cute weeds to contend with because of the work of the Holy Spirit in regenerating this person. Um, the crop grows to maturity and bears fruit. But it should be said that uh, even in good soil there is varying degrees of fruitfulness based upon the quality of that person's heart, the quality of the soil. Some bear 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. Um, the life that is most productive is the one that obeys the Word of God promptly, unquestioningly, and joyfully. So we have these different scenarios painted by the Lord Jesus Christ with regards to the human uh, spirit, the human heart. I trust that um, you will contemplate these things and uh, let's pray that the Lord would till our hearts, would rake out the rocks, would um, you know, apply his uh, cleansing to every part of us and um, that any weeds that do grow up that uh, he would pluck out. So um, I think that's good food for thought. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.